just curious to know, are you experiencing some of the same things that I'm experiencing in my market, the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area? Now, the reason why I'm asking the question is that I've noticed now for going on two weeks that the market has been slow. And it's been slow in ways. It's been slow in ways that I'm not used to seeing. I happen to just start my um, grind today. It's Saturday, uh, May 18, 2024. Um, I'm coming into the weekend, or at least the Saturday, Sunday weekend, having earned or grossed $1,338 and change. Um, this is by far my lowest total in shit over a month it's going on almost two months now and the reason why i say that is because i have at least over the past six previous weeks managed to gross more than two two thousand the, the usual number that i've often shared here on the gate geezer channel in fact early this year i mentioned how i had put together five straight weeks um earlier this year earning two thousand or more and that stretch went to seven weeks but again, what I'm noticing is how slow it, it's been across all apps. I'm talking about the gig food delivery apps and the last mile delivery apps. And I'll even throw in for me, who's not an over the road person, but for someone who works the load boards for uh, broken opportunities, despite what you may think, like in this segment of the gig geezer or in this segment of the gig geezer, um, those are I've not seen what I've what I've termed earlier in the year the the volume and quality of opportunities. Um, I'm seeing that again. So let me throw you, throw some numbers out there for you. Last week I grossed twenty four hundred dollars, twenty four hundred forty dollars. Fourteen hundred of it came on that uh, career to Miami run take away that and so then you look at the other days I mean I I it was a brawl to make it to what I made to the other days 270 270 to low two low two and then this week so far um, I had that $400 run to uh, Wilmington but then you look at the other days 20 270 yesterday 20 and then another day two and that's where, where I'm at. So some would say, God damn geezer, I'll take those numbers. I'll take those numbers anytime, any any week. All right, I'm not I'm not gonna argue with you. I'm not gonna get into a pissing contest with you about that. But I'm just asking the question. I'm I'm sharing me as I like to share, as I think I should share me with this channel. Um, and so if you just share how you're experiencing in the comment section below are you experiencing the same thing or are you doing better it could be just a market thing but this is what i've noticed now i do want to throw uh, this segment is going to be really about some random thoughts um the next thought that comes to mind is over on mike drop barbecue now i've mentioned him a lot um, and the reason why I mentioned him is because I'm concerned. I'm concerned because it could be happening in my market too, and I don't even realize it. Mike Drop Barbecue recently uh, showed video evidence of how immigrants are running game on the apps, particularly on Uber and Lyft. And they're running game to, to the extent that it's almost like a little um, extortion or mafia ring where people have to um, if they want to gain access to um, good paying airport rides and, and ride share, they got to pay them because they've got such, they run such a game where they're, they're, op, they're, ho they're holding multiple accounts, like dozens of accounts. And then among them, they somehow work a game to where they move up in the queue and all that to where um, the next opportunity comes up. If it is not one that they want, well, then they kind of let it go to somebody else, whatever the fuck. I mean, um, I, I, I've not done ride share much lately, but check out Mike, Bar Mike Drop Barbecue's video, this one here, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But I'm concerned 
in, in, in that it could be happening on the last mile gig apps. We already know that it, the shit kind of happens on Instacart and uh, um, Spark, Walmart Spark. I'm not on Walmart Spark. I have tried to get on Walmart Spark since 2019 and never been able to get on. But I am. I have seen with my with with my old eyes a guy who had multiple phones getting multiple orders. And I'd seen how he'd actually moved up from a Honda CRV to a Honda Pilot uh, 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 crossover vehicle uh, because of the money that he was earning. I mean, he was getting two and three orders at a time because he's working two and three and four phones at a time, uh, getting opportunities that other people were sitting there not getting. Then there's Instacart, same thing. Uh, couple, one person is working the phones and then um, one person's working the phones um, they get the they get this order. The person goes in, they, they hand them the phone. They go and shop the order, and then somebody else somebody else delivers it. Um, I've seen I've I've seen videos of that. I've not seen it in the Columbia market, but it does not surprise me. I do know, like on the Rodi app, there were people who were working multiple apps. Multiple, there were people who were working multiple phones, multiple accounts, trying to dominate the opportunities in the Columbia market um, I've also I've also been aware of people running game to the extent that um, they were be so one person would be at home and then have somebody to go pick it up and then when the Walmart people would um, try to ver they would ver they would then try to verify who the person was to be picking it up then that game got kind of but that game, that game kind of got exposed so I guess it's human nature to run game on shit. Admittedly, I'm gonna say it like this. Um, I kind of I, I kind of go about things as like a NASCAR crew chief. I understand certain parameters by which we can do things on the apps, and I work the gray area. And I've often and I've shared that with a couple people that I'm looking for the gray area to exploit. But it's all within it's all within rules. And, it, and it's never caused me to be deactivated for those time, for the wrong reasons. But next thing, for some reason I came across Cam Newton, the NFL quarterback's um, uh, YouTube channel. And he had one out recently that really, really resonated with me. And it was about this uh, uh, wide receiver who just signed a $30 million contract, four year, $120 million contract. Now, the wide receiver put out there on his social media how he might see half after taxes. 30 million, he he estimates his net is 15.7 million. Okay. Cam Newton took it a step further. Cam Newton, Cam Newton uh, explained about the hangers ons and the homies and the homegirls and then the the, the, the the sugar pie honey bunches who uh who, who think that they're entitled to shit of uh, that you're doing um and what i've always known at least at the pro athlete level or even at the entertainer level because they're all entertainers in that respect the hardest thing to learn is how to say no one thing he said that really stayed stay with me he spoke of a, a line from this book by Robert Kobayashi where he said the rich folk they they understand that there are taxes but the one thing that they try to do is to pay less taxes okay now this is where this comes back to gig geezer recently I had an exchange with someone who's been booted off of my channel um, this guy I mean what seemed to be constructive construct what seemed to have been over the course of time constructive interaction got personal to the extent that I saw it coming where I was gonna have to I was gonna have to zap his ass. I asked him, how much are you paying in taxes? Since you're always talking about my net my net expenses and trying to show me how my net expenses are these numbers instead of what I'm saying. What are you paying in your fucking taxes? He said forty five hundred. I'm going to share it to you like this. I've not paid $4,500 total in taxes this decade. So what does that tell you? What does that tell you? I've often said that I have legitimate expenses. 
legitimate expenses. I've often said how mileage is a 1099's best friend. Keep that in mind. You need to take that, take that, take that to heart. Take that to heart. If you don't understand what, I'm, what I mean by that, talk to somebody who's a financial, uh, a qualified financial ad advisor who can explain to you what I mean by legitimate ex ex legitimate write-offs and Miley's being a 1099's best friend. Because I promise you that I paid less taxes than 99% of you, especially those of you who who don't feel that I don't know what I'm talking about, who feel that I'm just, I'm just, I'm just yet another person out here in YouTube, YouTube sphere. But I promise you, I paid, I paid less taxes in 2023, in 2022, 2021, in 2020, than 99% of you. So, what I'm gonna do now is uh, kind of get into my grind for today. And what I'm going to do is at the end of the day, get back and share with you what I earned um, at least today, Saturday, May 18, 2024. All right, I am on my way to the second half of a stacked Instacart order that, and the offer amount was like $48 and 73, $48 and change, 32 items total. Um, miles almost are. I'm not gonna say they're negligible, but it's almost not something that I'm gonna make a big deal about because it's going from one side of the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area to the other, going from the Northwest to the Northeast. And the reason why I took it because also with it going over to Northeast, it's over where I live. Um, the first half was 12 items. Second half is gonna be 19 items. But as typical when you do, um, uh, these these uh, Instacarts, these shop and pays, it always seems to be, there's always one order, there's always one item that you can't find. And that was this particular item, uh, dried tomatoes. Um, the guy pointed me in the right direction, but it was actually a couple miles over. And the only reason why I kind of figured that it was gonna be in among the the uh, sauce aisles, because I mean, what the hell? I mean, you got, you got uh, tomato sauce, tomato paste, um, all the Italian food type stuff, and I figured, well, maybe that's where it was. He told me two hours over where it would be like with anchovies and shit, um, um, other cooking items, but it, it wasn't. Um, one thing I'm gonna say about the difference between a, a Sam's and a, and a Costco, at least for me, and I've, and, and I've talked a lot about this privately, at least among my queen, at least with my queen, I prefer Costco over Sam's, different different type of clientele, um, different type of culture. If I have a question at Sam, uh, if I have a question at Costco, nine times out of ten, I've got an answer. I can't say that with Sam's. Uh, Sam's, you ask a question, uh, they may walk off from you. Um, very, I, I mean, as far as me getting an answer, it's less than a 50-50 percent chance. Not to mention. Um, some people find Sam's much easier to find items, but I find items much faster at Costco than I do Sam's. Don't ask me why. Now, one thing about, at least in my market, there's only one Costco's. There are one, two, three Sam's locations in the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area. And all of them have different setups. So you can't presume that if you go to one Sam's, you're going to find everything here, and then another Sam's, you're going to find everything same place. No, it's not like that. You have to do a few orders to get an idea of where you need to find stuff in each location. All right, where I'm at in the Columbia, where I'm at in the Columbia metropolitan area was once considered the outer reaches of civilization. I mean, we're talking about trees and sticks and everything else, but. As with progress and population growth, people move move to areas that are uncharted and become congested. Back to the this um, stacked Instacart order. So I'm heading now to the first um, 
drop-off location. And um, what, 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 what I'm thinking about is, some would say, it was, it's a way, it was a waste of my time getting, it was a waste of time to accept this stacked order. I didn't even look at the miles because I, like I said, I knew that I was going from the northwest part of Columbia to the northeast part of Columbia where I'm at now. Um, and I'm likely to make $48 in change. And, it's, and I knew that it would probably take me two hours. So then you're gonna say, geezer? Someone may say, geezer, that was a waste of time. Okay, do you feel then it would have been a waste of time if you were just doing DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats orders, and over the same period of time, you may have completed five, anywhere between four and six orders, assuming, um, assuming no large order opportunities. Would you say then that you wasted your time or you would say, oh, I was busy? So it becomes, when the market is slow like this, it, you know, it may be a question of, you, you can question time management, but you can also question money management. I've been, I've been at this for, like I mentioned, two hours. I've seen very few of anything. Um, the closest thing that, that might have piqued my, my curiosity was the only last mile delivery opportunities, but that was back about 35 miles away in Lexington County. It was a grill weighing 173 pounds. The first time it appeared on one app, it first um, was offering 35.66. Then it came back to $40. And then it went to another app and it was offering $25.76. And then I haven't seen it since. Right now, I think I made a, I think I made the best choice taking this order. All right, I am in the midst of what I would used to say was my second half hustle. Um, the first half ended at about with about eighty four dollars and six cent. Um, after that Instacart, I had a last mile delivery opportunity that paid I want to say. $35.75. In fact, that's exactly what he paid. And that was a bag of peat moss. 60 pound, 65 pound bag of peat moss. Um, so I went home after that because it just wasn't much happening. I mean, I, it's got me to think that, hey, either I've got to change some of the things what I'm doing or the reality is that um, the gig economy, the gig economy as we know is really um, contracting, and it's, in, it's contracting in ways that is a confluence of a lot of factors. Uh, people are not spending as much, and there, are, and then there's the influx of other drivers, and um, there's the potential that there could be people in certain markets running game, running rings. Um, um, mafia gang type of rings where they they they've clogged up the market with a gazillion phones and figured well if they can't if they can't if they can't compete like everyone else they'll just try to clog everything up to where they everyone has to come to them to get to to get access to the market but that's that it's not confirmed at least in the Columbia market but that's something that definitely I've been thinking about I have to check out checking out uh, Mike Drop Barbecue's content, uh, Mike Drop Barbecue's content of late. So after after a while at the Geezer Compound, um, I happened to check out a last mile opportunity that had gone up. It had appeared on it appeared on another app at, for thirty seven dollars and one cent. It bounced to another app that I saw for forty dollars and change. Then it bounced back to the other app for 37. Then it bounced back to that app for 40, and I figured, oh, it was gone. And then a while later, it appeared, it comes back again on this on the app that it had it for $40 and change, and it came in at 52. So I grabbed it, thinking that this is probably going to be the best that it's going to get for the day if it shows up. Now I'd seen another last mile opportunity. Um, it was offering $45. And you had you had you had um, you had to move like 1,200 pounds worth of items. Nope, 
I'm not gonna do that. There was another one on the same app where it dealt with furniture and it was off from 49, but you're driving like 25 miles for $49 and it was a duo. No, geezer don't do that for that type of money. Now, here's the thing. I have talked about Thursdays. I have I have done video, I've done entire segments pretty much at uh, basically talking down on Thursdays. I've gotten into arguments with some individuals about Thursdays and thirst. And what I'm getting at is I see where the market, at least in the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area, this market has gotten difficult. And we're supposedly in the we're supposedly entering into the for last mile opportunities, entering into we're in the peak or busy season. Maybe for gig food apps, it's entering into the slow season because of the, on, the, the, the coming influx of students and school employees who are now looking for looking for extra money opportunities um, for the next six to eight weeks. Probably for the next eight to ten weeks, I should say. We're not even there. We're at the beginning. We're at the mid-May, and we're probably two, three weeks away, and I'm describing some things to you that probably shouldn't be described until at least at least historically speaking in recent memory until like June July so that that that's reason for concern am I pressing the emergency button no but I've definitely got to rethink some things so all that is to say and by the way if you like the content that's been provided in this segment or in any other segment hit that subscribe button give my content a thumbs up share my content among others and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below so for me today the goal was to try to get the 200 knowing knowing what I'd based on what I'd shared based on what I shared earlier in the day and what I'd seen in recent days and weeks the goal is to get the 200 this order this DoorDash order that I'm doing now for $12.75 it's going to put me at a buck 47 for the day and about 1487 1488 for the week this is arguably my worst performing week since the end of 2023 when i put when i had back-to-back 1200 dollars weeks um this is right now my worst week of 2024 so if you want to talk if if you if you want to know if i'm sharing with you um Pretty much, if I'm, if you want to know, if you want to find, if if you're curious to know if I'm sharing with you the good and the bad, this is the bad. Now, I get it, man. Some people say, "God damn it, geezer." I would love to say my bad week is fifteen hundred dollars. I would kick your ass and take your money, and your van, and your F one fifty, and your and your Taurus, if I were to make fifteen hundred dollars on a bad week. Okay. I get it but this is me this is my channel this is my content okay um, the goal coming out is to try to get the 100 get the two the goal coming out this evening was to get the 200 right now if I get the 150 which would be the next order that I do that may be good for today and I'm not good and I'm not accustomed to saying 150 is a good day I'm I don't like saying 200 is a good day but I'd like to think that I still have some sense of, of uh, I have some sensibility and some sense of reality. When it isn't there, it isn't there. It's like, um, since I, I don't play golf, I can tell you like with bowling, when you're bowling on a, when you're bowling on lane conditions and a score that will move you up is a 210. That means it's a very challenging shot and you gotta make you gotta make your shots. You're not gonna get a lot of strikes. One miss, one miss, and you might be shooting a buck sixty, buck seventy. 
Then again, you may not miss and shoot a buck 70, buck 80. That's how that's how difficult the shot can be sometimes. But again, this is a day where if 210 would be a 210 would be a, a, a victory in itself. Now the other part to this is it, it could be speaking to me being that stubborn old son of a bitch and motherfucker who has talked so bad about these apps and how they've tried to put the squeeze on you in such a way that you've got to accept and complete basically all the orders that come your way in order to gain priority because that is the key word priority to higher paying opportunities if they come that's the other thing it's not like you're guaranteed to have this steady flow of higher paying opportunities but you may you may gain priority to them so if you're if the keyword is priority then it's still a it's still a 50 50 thing it's a coin flip and i've had some opportunities this week that i've not shared but the most recent was um a pickup at a pizza joint the offer amount was fifteen dollars and seventy five cent and it paid twenty seven forty five my acceptance rate on the doordash app is one percent now it's probably two percent so that tells me still, as I've mentioned in another recent segment of the Gig Geezer, that acceptance rate doesn't really matter. It's still about volume and quality of opportunity in your market. Because if you have the volume, at some point, if you if you run the numbers enough, you're going to see certain a certain quality of opportunities that come with it. So that's what's interesting about this order here 1275 is what it's offering to me the actual order amount was $39.56 and who knows what type of fees that this person is paying on top of that let's say it's $50 in fees $50 in fees for this now I know that hey you go to the store it's nothing now it's very commonplace my understanding is since my queen does all the shopping at the stores and I really don't pay attention to how much people are paying with the orders when I do the Instacart. But it seems commonplace that you're going to pay two, three hundred dollars for for your groceries, and you pay fifty dollars for just this. Wow. I can see why there has been. The, the volume has dropped dramatically on these apps because it costs so much to get what you get. So anyway, hopefully I've not lost you. Hopefully you like. Hopefully you've gotten something out of this segment of the Gig Geezer. And if you like the content that's been provided in this segment or in any other segment, hit that subscribe button. Give my content a thumbs up. Share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. And by the way. Um, this is what my or this is what my total is for today. This is what my total is so far for the week. There's still one more day, so I'll be coming out tomorrow, uh, Sunday, May 19, 2024, and hopefully, I may catch a flyer. I may catch a miracle of a day, and I may end up at 2,000 for the entire week. Right now, um, right now, I'm thinking that if I got if I get the 1,800. I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. But it's going to be my it's going to be one of my lowest totals for 2024. So, that's all I again, that's all I have for this segment. Um again, hit the hit the subscribe button, hit the like, and I welcome your comments in the section below. I'm in Wood Lane. As always, may your grind and may your hustle continue.